it was always in the back of your mind that oh, I'm 31, I'm 32, I've just had a shoulder, my second shoulder reconstruction in two years and um, had stem cells in my knees and those sorts of things. And then the back started going on me and all that. But um, I remember the last one I had, it was pretty much, well, I've got 18 months left on a contract. I've come this far, why, why not? I've got eight games to go to get to 300. What's the worst thing I can do? Got it away to Croker. He's on his way towards the corner. That's a try. Yeah, stressful, but then relief. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he made it there. Um, gosh, it was just like all the feels. Like I guess we were at a point where we just thought, you know, it's not going to happen. We kind of just accepted as much as, you know, it would be the beautiful love story, but we kind of just saw what will be will be. All that Jared really sort of started to care about was just running out in the field with Rory. If it was in um, reserve grade yeah. or first grade, he just wanted to be on the field. Rory's obsessed with football, so just the 284 just plastered everywhere. It was just something special and Jared's face everywhere and the amount of people that even got to GIO was just crazy. What's going through your head? Shit. What, what's like, he done? How, yeah. What's going on? What, yeah, like... I don't know, like, yeah, hold back the tears, wait to find out what is actually going on and then go in there and find out. But, like, the worst injury was the one he did at home yeah. <laughs> with no trainers or any doctors around. So that like, that was bad. that was horrible. Tried a few things to pull it and that she did. She was freaking out. He's, like, yelling at me, pregnant. like, like <laughs> Rory's crying, fix it, like, push, the there. doctor did this. And I'm like, oh, okay. it doesn't, like, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look like <laughs> it's just going to hop back yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty, Doc was even crying. We thought there and then that's when we probably... Thought that, that might have been in. Is head coach something you'd be interested in doing in the future? Uh... Good morning, good afternoon, Hi. good night, wherever you are in this universe. Hello. Hi. Um, as you can hear, we've got an incredible guest today. I actually have written up a long introduction because I really want to read it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why not? We've got a remarkable individual who's here, so I have, bear with me. I really wanted to get into it and I can't memorise all of it, but I had to, re I have to read it. So, welcome to Mind Mace. <laughs> no, uh, we've got here Jared uh, Croker and his wife, Britt. We are going to have these remarkable individuals exploring their introspection of their personal and professional lives. Today we have a truly special episode as we sit down with the Canberra's Raiders captain and NRL star Jared Croker alongside his incredible wife, Britt. Jared Croker has left an undeniable mark on the rugby league landscape break records and captaining his team with passion and de determination. But today we are not just here to discuss his career or the field we're also joined by his equally impressive better half Brit to uncover the dynamic that fuels their journey as a couple in this candid conversation we aim to peel back the layers exploring the challenges they faced the controversies they navigated and the balance they struck between personal aspirations and shared dreams from the highs of career milestones to the intricate of maintaining the love relationship in the public eye. This episode promises to be an insightful, thought provoking exploration into the lives of the extraordinary individuals of Brit and Jared. Yeah, fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I really had to do so it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. Thank you. Um, it was a special one for you guys today i had to like amp myself up you know like wwe when they go in and they're like hello i don't know how they do it i had to like channel that in for a moment we should definitely incorporate the raiders clap the viking clap into the oh, oh yes yeah. Yeah. yeah um that would be we'll a great touch yeah. 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 unless you guys want to do it now for oh, it. No. <laughs> some asmr in the background um welcome how are you guys today Good. Good. Yeah. I think I'm going to be a bit swivelly on this swivel chair, but I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good here. Just uh, cruising along. Uh, it's actually... The daycare, so good. Yeah, you've told me all about the... Just before we caught up, but this is your first time together, right? On, um, on a podcast. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is exciting. We've done interviews and stuff together, but Jared always takes the rein, so it's yeah. just I sort of following what he's saying and just go along, but... We'll Swap roles to, today, yeah, see, we'll see how we go. How it goes. Yeah, it's a bit of a switcheroo. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Sit back today, you can take over. <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you usually navigate that? Um, I don't know. I, I guess we've been together for what, 14 years or so, so it's just kind of always been, you know, Jared, I don't know, spot, the spotlight, the attention, I suppose. But, yeah, it's just the norm and, I, like, we like it. Like, 
it's such a short time that I guess you're relevant and people like yeah. you and want to know you. So you embrace it and take it on. I, oh, I love it. So he loves it. We love it. The boys love it. The boys are obsessed with it. So, yeah, we just embrace it while we can. That's – and it's a good – it seems like it's a good dynamic that you've guys got to go together where you've – it's worked for 14 years. Yeah. That's a decent amount of time. Yeah, well, I was still in year 10 at high school in Goulburn and Jared had started at Arendelle College. Um, I went to Arendelle. Arendelle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know if you I could say he yeah, went to Arendelle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was registered there, but that was about it. You went for sport days. That's all – we had days. all the sports people yeah. there, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think we met back in a backyard party back in the day and um, I still obviously finished off school in Goulburn and then sort of moved over here unofficially and then started my beauty apprenticeship. Yep. And then I think we got our first rental. 2012 or so, don't you? Yeah. I think, yeah. Um, and then rented a few places and we bought our first place in 2014. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we've just had two boys. R- Rory was born in, born in 2020 and Tate in 2022. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Yeah. That's, I didn't realise how young they were. Yeah, babies. They seemed a lot bigger in the photos. Rory, like they're both big boys. Yeah. Um, Rory's four in June and Tate's a monster. We just call him Tatey Potato because he literally looks like a potato. <laughs> <laughs> He loves his food and, yeah, he's just sort of only started walking the last couple of months. So, Well, he knows where his priorities are. Yeah, yeah. smart man. I love food too. Yeah, smart man. So so you guys met at a party. Yeah. Uh, a party, yeah. We well, sort of, our first hangout no. I think was a party. Or yeah. did, was it, did you pick me up from school? Oh, that's a long time ago. You had a friend. School pickups um, and school pick, yeah. house parties and a bit of everything, I think. Yeah. yeah long time ago. I think it was the the time that I was walking out of school and you you and Brad were driving and I was so embarrassed because he was yelling out the window of the car, <laughs> abusing me to get in the car. Pretending and to be like, a parent. Yeah. yeah, pretending to be my dad or something. And yeah, I just couldn't stay away apparently. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you know what you were getting yourself into with the relation um, being out in the spotlight or well he kind of wasn't really like he was just like he had just started playing footy so it wasn't really anything yet I suppose we both hoped and obviously he had the skill and the drive and the want to go further but you but never thought like oh this could eventuate or anything no nah, nah. well, I've been so young too, yeah like it was just we'll see like, like, you're just like I'm just here let's see where it goes yeah. and then when it all happened when it all just started to unfurl in that way how did you what how did that affect your relationship with you two? Did it affect in any kind of way or? Mm, nah, uh, like I guess, sorry, I'm taking the lady. That's no, good. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, like I was still at school so I, there was two years of our relationship where I still lived in Goulburn and he was over here. Mm. And, um, yeah, I guess it wasn't for a few years after that and then I, Jared's role as captain come on pretty early in his career um, so I Very guess early. like, yeah. you know, the partying days and all that sort of like the days where we were younger, like, I guess he had to be a bit more controlled and, yep. um, behaved. <laughs> so yeah, like, no, our relationship from the get go has been solid and strong and, um, yeah, crazy that it's been this long. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you live in camera what, and with your, cause you became a captain at 20, age 24. 24 yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we sort of, Brittany sort of, when she finished school, she'd just come over and part-time sort of live where I was living with a lady, Keza, out at Tuggeron, and we sort of just, yeah, with along with the captaincy side of things, we pretty much, we matured, both matured pretty quickly, to be honest, so it's sort of, at a young age, matured pretty quickly, but um, yeah, it all come along pretty quickly, the captaincy stuff, so um, yeah, it seems like forever ago talking about all that now, but wouldn't change a thing, would you, Dale? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what day you get me on. Yeah. yeah would, would, do you find there's a lot of uh, – how do you navigate through, like, going from, oh, I'm just chilling, there's no really spotlight, but living in Canberra, having spotlight on you is a little bit different. What people most people don't know is Canberra is such a small town, so when you're out there there's – hence why you're probably private – with certain aspects of your life, yeah, on social media and yeah, like we definitely like sharing, but there's definitely things that we just yeah. don't share. Um, 
But I don't know, Canberra's a small, like it is like a, a big country town. So um, I guess being in the spotlight for Jared, like it's nice. Like people are always mm. so nice and welcoming and just want to say g'day and That's you know, nice. give him a bit of a an applause to, you know, something that he had done or, you know, another milestone that he sort of kicked over. So yeah. no, nah, like it was, it's like, yeah, spotlight in a way, but. We, it's a very easy way of doing it in Canberra. Like yeah, we're both it's, from Goulburn. It's just like a big country town, and um, we're very lucky in Canberra as a general and, and a team um, or a club that we've got. We're the only club here, so everyone mm. everyone loves them really. If you're a Raiders fan, so everyone everyone's good, dedicated. Good. Yeah. yeah, but like it's, you go to the shops and everyone's just cruise. You say good day. Like it's not a, you know, the spotlight's there to a degree, but it's not a, you know, a spotlight that you you know don't want to be a part of. If that yep. makes sense, so yep. it's pretty cruisy, and I'm sure it's the same stuff for Brittany as well. Well, that's an, a beautiful um, outcome to have mm. in, and it, that's an also a sentiment to Canberrians yeah. and how they, we are. We usually can be quite um pretty friendly, yeah. kind, Super. generous. Yeah. yeah. Hey, G'day, how are you going? Want a pie? Yeah. I love my, the lady, the Dan Dixon, <laughs> and her pies are so yummy. <laughs> um, but So there's no really um, challenges in that. Is there any um, mental challenges that comes in? with the prep, with um, pressure, scrutiny or anything that comes within the game um, whilst you're on the field? Um, there's obviously always pressures on the field and, and scrutiny and stuff, but again... Um, yeah, How do you handle that, do you find? Well, it, it's, it comes back to a little bit of the camber as well. Like mm. if, if it's really that bad, it probably no one really cares after a couple of days or they get over it, they move on pretty quickly. Whereas yep. if you're in Sydney or Brisbane or Melbourne and you're a, one of those high profile teams and players and stuff, it's probably forever picking at you and going for you and going for you. Whereas Canberra's not like, not like that. So we're very lucky in that, um, you know, as, as opposed to games and preparation and stuff, it's, I mean, it, it's, I'm very laid back, I'm very cruisy. So it doesn't yep. really, I try not to get into much of a strict routine with stuff like that because, you know, otherwise you're just going to do your own head in. So I, don't, I never really got into too much of that. A lot of yeah. people do, but I'm, that's not how I sort of ever have been. So Yeah, you don't work another, like that. No, nah, I'm very yeah. lucky in that regard too that I don't let too much get to me and um, hopefully the results just come our way. But um, feels yeah. like this was just meant to be for you because you, you, you sort of have to have – to get through this is to have to have that sort of mentality of like, you know, not not – Nothing really is going to affect me in that way. I'm here to play the game, do what I need to do. Whatever happens, eh, it's all right. Yeah, and probably the back end of the career become even more chilled out because you sometimes you know had a couple of injuries towards the back end, having kids and stuff. You just got to mm. take everything in your stride as opposed to preparing things three and four days out or weeks out. You just sort of take everything as it goes, so you don't get too caught up in it all. Yeah, absolutely, and especially you've you've dealt with some injuries in your career yeah had a couple a couple, couple late yeah <laughs> also late um you know pretty much since i turned 30 it started chipping yep. away at me but um you know very lucky as well in in that regard that a lot of people get there when they're 18 or 20 years old so mm. i got through 10 or 12 years without really having too much of a serious injury um and then i got a couple ones late but uh, like i said i'd rather take them when i'm 30 than 20 as well yeah absolutely and you've, you you can recover a lot quicker yes uh, when yeah. you're um, what I've was had, kind of your mindset at that uh, those later stages where it was kind of a back to back couple of injuries, and then there was that so, sort of most of a season that you lost. W were you unsure if you were going to get back, or was it um, always in your mind like, "No, nah, I'm getting back into this team," and then uh, go from there? There was a bit of both. Like it was always in the back of your mind that oh, I'm 31, I'm 32. I've just had a shoulder, my second shoulder reconstruction in two years, and um, I had stem cells in my knees and those sorts of things. And then the back started going on me and all that. But um, I remember the last one I had. It was pretty much well, I've got 18 months left on a contract. I've come this far. Why? Why not? I've got eight games to go to get to 300. What's the worst thing I can do? I'm not. Mm. And I, it probably wasn't the best way to look at it. But I was like, well. the I'm not embarrassed, too embarrassed to play reserve grade either. Um, and that's the way I looked at it. If I could just get back to play footy with my mates and finish off the year how I wanted to finish, um, you know, I was happy enough to do that. I was just very lucky and um, very lucky the way I did pan out and I got to those games and got to get back in and sort of finish to a degree on how I wanted to as well. Mm. So, But, yeah, a bit of both. It was always in the back of your mind, especially a couple of years end on end. But um, at the same time, we were lucky enough in that sort of period there of a couple of years to have a couple of – 
little kids and boys and they just changed the whole perspective and outlook mm-hmm. on life. You know, it's footy was footy only lasts, you know, a certain amount of time. Um, but you've got the rest of your life to look forward to with your your family as well. So that sort of changed my outlook a little bit as well. Was was the three hundred definitely in your mind as as a, a reason to get back? Yeah, I think um yeah, it was. Uh, but I sort of not it was it was another one of those things that was probably always in the back of my mind. Um, but I didn't want I wasn't just doing every day every single day. I wasn't going to get there to get three hundred games. Um, I was just going to get back and get fit and like I said, start the season off wherever I started it off and um, see if I could get there and I got the chance. And then once once we started, uh, once I did get back in there and we strung a few wins together, it sort of started to come around. Not quickly. It felt like forever. Those eight games they normally feel <laughs> like nothing, but it felt like forever. But um, I wouldn't let anyone talk about it until I'd finished 299. So I sort of... Um, and you yeah. had to miss the one before as well. Yeah, yeah, I got to miss the, got to have a week off there, which I'm, you know, I know some people, a lot of, you know, people, was, it was either you either loved it or you hated it, a bit like, you know, how everyone else sort of sees the club, I think. But, um, yeah, I think, in hindsight, it was great for me. I, and I knew from the, the moment Stick told me he was doing that, that it would be great for the town and the community and... Um, you know, the way they promoted that whole fortnight going into the 300th game and, and how we celebrated minus the second half of the game, mm. um, you know, it was so special. And I'm, I'm grateful that I got the opportunity to, to do it at home and mm. they put on the big lunch and dinners and the oh, weekend and the week before. And, yeah, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. And um, I'm very grateful that the, the club did that for me as well. And what about that week for you, Brit? That, that would have been a stressful one. Um. Yeah, stressful, but then... Relief, yeah. <laughs> like the fact that he made it there. Um, gosh, it was just like all the feels. Like I guess we were at a point where we just thought, you know, it's not going to happen. We kind of just accepted as much as, you know, it would be the beautiful love story, but we kind of just thought what will be will be. All that Jared really sort of started to care about was just running out in the field with Rory. If it was in um, reserve grade yeah. or first grade, he just wanted to be on the field. Rory's obsessed with football, so... Um, but the week, like, it was so well celebrated from um, interviews and um, we went in for a press conference and all the boys were in the room, like, clapping as we walked in. Like, it was just crazy. Like, it was just wild and, yeah, photos and um, the Rays put on a really nice lunch for us as well at the Marion. Um, and then, yeah, the game and just the bits and pieces th- throughout, like, just the 284 just plastered everywhere. It was just something special and... Jared's face everywhere and the amount of people that even got to Jero was just crazy luck. It was like a grand final. Oh, it was like a that semi-final. little bit, of, yeah, yeah, the build up and all that. But even you know, Brittany done a lot of stuff throughout the week as well as being a mother to a couple of kids. But getting videos sorted, like there was so many videos that they had of former teammates, friends, players, you know, jockeys, everyone they could think of that I was friends with or would appreciate it. You know, put a lot of time and effort into all this and then all the videos and stuff, which I've sort of seen and throughout the week and drip fed and everything. And then we had the big luncheon and the build up to the game. Game day was a late Friday night or Friday night game. So we had people coming at home on the Friday and staying at the home and at home. And then I knew something a little bit was going up, but I didn't know exactly what. Come she had on. a surprise, <laughs> you su- did not. surprise party on the Saturday night with, I don't know how many people were there. Could have been a couple of hundred ups. Is know. it hard to surprise you? Uh, uh Oh, is it? Uh, Not really? No. no. She does surprise me a bit, when, especially when she says no Christmas presents and then buys me about your yeah, AirPods and everything else for Christmas. And then I, I get, get angry and... that I don't have anything. Because like, yeah. how, how did you hide that from him? Because if he's around, if you're around ev- everywhere. Well, I kind of told him that we were just having a yeah, dinner having a with feed, like our, no, our close friends. Yeah. So it was at the Duxton that I said, oh, we're just going to go to the Duxton. There's like 20 of us. So like it was sort of the truth, but then just extended yeah, like left out of how many people were actually was, coming. I looked when I walked in there, it was the people I just did not expect to be there, like friends from Goulburn and family oh, wow. and stuff from away. And people who traveled like um, it was crazy, yeah. like it was got, a massive effort. Yeah, and the boys, I knew all the boys were obviously going because we went to the pub beforehand. They sent me to the pub, but you know, lunchtime beforehand, and there was about 30 blokes there. I'm like, well, they're obviously all coming to the ducks, and so I knew that, but then even when I got there, I was still very surprised that. How many people you had like a, 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 a sniff, a little smell of something, but not 100%. Yeah, or... yeah I knew we were going for a feed and a couple of beers, but I didn't expect a full yeah. In hindsight, show. I probably should have um, put my foot down and said no to the pub at 2 p.m. when the party was kicking off at 7. <laughs> you too many beers. 
I wouldn't lie. It was a pretty big, pretty big party. <laughs> I mean, it was a big night. <laughs> it's guaranteed to for that to unfurl in that yeah. way. Yeah. Now that, but you've had um, now you have time on your hands and things, and you can sort of go and do your interests together and have more time for the kids and enjoy that. How's that been? Yeah. Uh, well, we we pretty much back end of last year and we will spend it away just on holidays and um, not even a family holiday really, just weddings and functions and catching up with family on the coast and everything like that. So we sort of plenty of time for that, but just back into routine now and um, yeah, plenty of family time. Kids, kids are both in school now in daycare. So we've got a bit of time for that and to do other things like this. And I'm still, I'm still a part of the club a little bit, but then I've got time off to do this sort of stuff and mm. you know, days where we can, start doing a few more things that Brittany's always wanted to do, whereas she probably hasn't had the chance over the last 15 years because of footy. So, yeah, um, yeah mixing it up a bit. Yeah. Like- and the coaching role too, uh, just announced. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm going in there and doing a bit of coaching as well, which is, um, yeah, it's good. It's good to have that. I can still go. I'm still going in and coaching and being a part of it all and still around the boys, still around the coaches, still around the club, um, you know, it, without – um, you know, you're just not going cold turkey because um, mm. you you know you see it a lot, and that's for every time everyone you talk to who's retired says, "Oh, it's just hard when you don't get that same feel that you've had for so long." Whereas I'm still able to get that every day with this team and the squad and the club. So I'm, another thing I'm very grateful for as well. It's a great transition to do that. Yeah, because I do hear a lot of athletes end up after they done with their career, they end up with a lot of mental health yeah. problems and it takes a toll on them. Yep. Sometimes it's not really spoken about too much. You kind of hide it away or um, find ways. But, yeah, it's I'm glad that you're in the space of yeah. being able to go and exercise that and yeah. be able to be around your mates still. Yeah. And If anything, I guess the last couple of years with Jarrah's injuries, obviously it would have been great if you just, you know, finished the fairy tale ending, but it kind of prepared him for life after footy because it yeah. wasn't just footy all the time. Like he was injured so, you know, there was time to do other things and explore other things and sort of get used to not being at football yeah. all the time. So have yeah. you figured out the interests that you're into? Um, or that you're both <laughs> into at the moment, that you want to both explore? Mm. Now that you're... Things. Like obviously it's good to be because I love football and I'm not, yeah. it's all I've ever known. So I have the coaching aspect of it's great. Yeah. I'm, you know, that's easy to me. And then um, I've actually, yeah, well, I started doing a bit of radio stuff on the weekend just with SEN Canberra and, um, you know, that, that covers sport and, and horse yeah. racing, which I'm passionate about. I've got some stuff hopefully coming up with um, harness racing, which I've got to, you know, soft spot for with a lot of harness a lot of uh paces so that sort of stuff as well so a bit of a mix of everything as well as um taking the dog for a walk which i didn't get to do that often because it took me a while to get out of bed most mornings but um yeah a bit of a mix and then doing a lot of like i said stuff like this that i probably would never have thought of doing but um britney's very good at expanding my um my options your horizons yeah horizons and and trying to get me out of my comfort zone (laughs) a little bit so um, you seem quite creative britney yeah, yeah, I suppose. Like I am. I'm like I'm. I'm open to everything. Like yeah. I'm definitely saying no. Yeah. To a lot of things, but yeah, I guess as now that Jared is, I guess involving and sort of creating a new yeah. life. Like yeah, I think you know he's got such a good platform and you know Jared Croker type thing. Like he needs to use his name and yeah. put himself out there and Expand. have fun with it. Yeah, yeah enjoy it. Yeah. Nothing. Um, doesn't have to be so serious or anything like that. It's yeah. just finding what's fun for you both and yeah and like obviously with Raiders I guess he was sort of sheltered and maybe not allowed to do certain things before when he was just sort of with the club so yep. yeah he can he can do what he wants now and so sort of there were certain restrictions on what you can do and can't say and things like that in that sense yeah a little bit I mean it's probably more just you just don't have time to do things when you're playing footy and, and yep. your whole life's based around footy so you don't really yep. think of doing other things outside of it um it's just a 24 7 thing so probably more yeah time than it's anything. like where could you find a time with having a partner and, and yeah you know kids and yeah. trying to build a family and yeah. Uh, yeah. train well, footy, that's the other part of it so yeah you yeah sort of any anything else else outside of that you need some recovery time as well yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you're trying to fit everything in yeah and uh, you're going to, with your beauty and, you know, your passions, has what influenced you into what you want to do now and has Jared had any in type of influence on you in that way or not? Um, yeah, well, I, I studied beauty straight out of school um, when I finished up at school 
And then I worked for a couple of years in different salons and then realised that I wanted to have my own thing. So yeah. I have done that up until I had the boys. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm just going to slowly get back into work this year. Um, I love it. Like I love chatting and catching up and like my clientele and my base that I had before was just catching up with friends and it was just a really nice environment and the fact that it's from home. You become your friends, you become your mates. Yeah. yeah you get to see them. You're catching time. up. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Like um, eyebrow, you know, eyebrows are what every two, three weeks. So you literally see them more than your actual friends. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, um, like the clients become one of like they'll send me Christmas gifts. and Yeah. yeah oh, that's so lovely. They're like, so kind. So kind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got into beauty, I think. I had a really bad eyebrow wax when I was just finishing you got school. got phenomenal eyebrows. I didn't. All right, now you do. <laughs> now I do. Yeah, they're phenomenal. <laughs> I literally got a front fringe cut because my eyebrows were so thin and oh. it made my nose so much bigger and it was just... It frames your face. Yeah, so I got a front Poor fringe thing. and I had it for like five years until my eyebrows grew back. So you got, ladies and gentlemen, through adversity, you find <laughs> your passions. <laughs> yes. Um, but, yeah, passions, I guess, like... I've been with Jared forever sort of thing. So, like, I've always been quite sporty and always played sport on the weekends. But when we met, sort of football overtook. And I love footy. Like, I still had a bit of learning to do. But I embraced the football. We travelled. We sort of, yeah, I just like doing that on the weekends. So yeah. my sport made me took a back burner. But I um, want to get back into playing hockey. And um, I'm actually training for a marathon in April. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Wow trying <laughs> trying to train <laughs> um me and my brother are gonna do the um marathon in newcastle yeah so yeah just like yeah little things like that i guess there's a bit more time yeah and flexibility to do while you're having two kids you're gonna train for a marathon yeah yeah wow. get up at four thirty five o'clock yeah gets up and goes for a 10k run and brings back brings me back a coffee and i'm in bed with rory jumps when Brittany gets up and goes to the gym rory hears her comes out and jumps in with me and she comes out and we're still laying in bed <laughs> and brings back a coffee and then starts a day again so it's pretty good yeah you know maybe you're passing on the baton to brit now <laughs> you're gonna be the next oh, athlete she always she always ran better than me even when i was at my fittest she'd still tear me up in a, in a long distance run yeah sure i'm all right but anything over a k i'm without Sorry. stopping i'm no good <laughs> no so good. you're, you're, quite, you're a, a track runner that's um, your yeah, I definitely just, prefer yeah, distance. Yeah. Distance, yeah. 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 Like I, I go to the gym every day. Um, most days I always walk our dog five or six Ks a day. Um, You're very active. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah. being outside. She, is, she and makes me feel very lazy sometimes. I, this <laughs> is exactly, I feel like I'm getting cold out. That's exactly <laughs> what's going to kick through my brain. I'm like, Mace, get up. I'm meant to be the athlete. I sit on the lounge for about two hours some days and she's just like, doesn't stop, doesn't sit still. Yeah, I just, yeah, love moving. I can't, if it, the sun's up, I can't sit down. Like, I can't watch a movie during the day. Like, there's no chance. That's commendable to do 6Ks every day on top of yeah. what you have to do. It's not like you're just doing 6Ks you've, and that's it, you're going home. You've got two children, yeah, a house, a family on well, top I've, of it. I've got my little dog too. You've so, got your dog. Yeah, so I've got to take her. So she's used to her, you know, five or 6Ks a day. So I feel like if I rip her off by a two or three. Oh, it's really more, if, if, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. so she likes the smells and... <laughs> So I thought Carry it was more that like you do six Ks just and then you bring on the dog. Nah. But no, it's for her. Oh, nah, so yeah. She What's her name? Her. Indy. Indy. Yeah. Oh, so, what is she? She's a Cocker Spaniel Cavalier something something. It's a bit of Cavoodle. Yeah. Right? Oh, Cavoodle. Oh, they don't shed. Mm, nah, she's not too bad. She yeah. does a little bit with the um, Cocker Spaniel in her, but yeah, not too bad. But it's really adorable. Yeah, she's our little babe. We lost um, our little best mate in July last year. So um, here. Yeah. Little Jax, um, he had a heart disease, so he had it for about three or four years. So yeah, she's a bit bit lost yep. since not having him around. But yeah, time obviously helps. Yeah, and now yeah. that you're around a little bit more, and you can all hang out together. Yeah, yeah. good. The kids are getting better with it too. Slowly, she yeah. loves. She actually, like, Rory doesn't understand yet, but she goes in every night and sleeps under his bed. And, oh. oh, it's so good. But he. She'll try and jump up at the end of the bed. He's like, get off, Indy. I'm like, mate, just leave it. Just leave it. <laughs> yeah. He's getting better, though. Yeah. He's getting better with her. That's adorable. That's what you um, That's what you want. I've got yeah. a um, Beagle Cross Staffy. Oh, yeah. Beagle Cross Staffy. Yeah, she's adorable. She mm. doesn't bark. Very relaxed. I actually sometimes want her to bark. So I'm like, can you please bark just one time? <laughs> just know you're a dog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you human? And I sit and she just looks at me, does these ones at me. Um, Cute. We'd be lost without them. Me, yeah. They don't. 
They don't deserve us. No, no, no not at all. Like there is no, there is no. Like it's wild. Their feelings. They understand everything we do and say. They, they, they teach you a lot. Do you yeah. find as well the? Well, my dogs taught me a lot of patience and just understanding. Like, oh, okay, you work a little bit differently, but you know, I don't have children, so I don't <laughs> know how things They're work. Kind of the same. So, yeah, like yeah. Uh, people usually say, after I have children, I get more patience and understanding of how you know, like uh, you've got you've got to have those things. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's closest to having Georgia, <laughs> right? Yeah. And yeah. yeah, they open up your heart so yeah. much. Yeah, so much. Definitely still learning the patient things. Patient thing with kids are. Yeah, <laughs> I, when you when you sent me that voice memo the other day, yeah, Rory's just banging in the background. Yeah. I'm like, Rory, be quiet! Like, when you send this, he's banging, playing with his play doh. I'm like, Rory, God, I was pretty song. funny. Mm. And um, even if I was saying, even if you um did bring them into the studio, just really show the realities of parenting, but. It'll be a pretty distracting for you. I did a radio interview this morning at 8.50 and I had the kids under the arm at 8.49, getting them into daycare and mum was screaming and they rang me. I'm like, shit, they're going to have, have to do an interview in the middle of a daycare centre. <laughs> so <laughs> chucked them in, put them on hold and got outside and got it done. But, yeah. Have you, had to, had to, or have you ever had to bring them in with you in a situation where? Uh, they're, they're not really. I've yeah. taken Rory in just but just taking him in because he loves yeah. it, the training all the time. But they all know him in there now. He's he's one of them now. So he's um, we've been pretty lucky. We haven't had too much. I think it was just the the week of your 300 game, Channel 9, come around home. So Roy was just in his element, wanted to show them all his toys. So we're there trying to do an interview. Oh. And no, it was Channel 9. Oh, yeah. Channel 9. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and he's just coming in, showing all his toys and screaming and, you know, this and that. And I'm like, just come on. I, my, I was just all Would over the like shop to trying my to toys? concentrate. Oh. He's got and his then, media training. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah, he's, um, he enjoys it. And since then, every single game, every single, he's still, Dad, I don't want to run out. We need to run out. And oh, he wants to run out every game. We have to get him to run out with the boys one day this, one day this year just to fill his void. But, um it's not that we're doing the Viking clap up the hallway for him and he's singing the team song after. Oh, he's he's, he's really into it. it. Yeah, oh, he loves it. Loves it. Sounds like he might be running out on the field as a player one day. Yeah, well, he, we read a book every night, the New South Wales Blues book, and he tells me every night he's going to play for the New South Wales Blues. And I go, all right, oh, mate. So, oh, that's adorable. But sorted, yeah. how do you feel about that one? <laughs> well, yeah, good luck. As a, lo- as a lawyer, as a lawyer, Yeah. Well, yeah, I never got to do it, so maybe he might. We'll see how he goes. Yeah. I will, like I'll be open to like golf or. Yeah. <laughs> he does love he does love golf. I'd rather play golf. Something, too. something better on the nice, body. Yeah. You're like, mm, can we switch it up? Maybe yeah. tennis. Yeah, something. Yeah. That's golf. actually. Oh, I hate tennis. Uh, I, I can't tennis. watch it. I just can't play it. I'm not good at it. I, I oh, like yeah? watching a little bit, but I'm not good at playing. How it was watching Jared all those years, and it, I guess it would be, and even another story as a mum, but. Uh, watching your son, but the the injuries, the the losses. How did you uh, go watching that unfold in the stands where you sort of have no control on in that eighty minutes? Yeah, the times. I like he said before he had a pretty good start with his injury toll. Like he was totally fine for the first couple of years, and then yeah, it sort of started like just chipping away, and you'd see him go down, and you I could just tell on his face that you know something was wrong, and he wouldn't get up, and then. The trainers will come out and assist him, and at the at the time, like you can't do it. Like you're literally just watching and just going, "What is it? Like, what have you done? You have to wait, you know, ten minutes for someone to contact you and say, like, he's okay or this. Or if we're at an away game, you literally, like, good luck. You yeah, wow, just that's a wait lot. Wait the end of the game, but yeah, at Whew. home we could sort of like get get our way down into the sheds to find find out what had gone on, but. Um, so you can't find out. You can't really do much. You're just sitting there. Yeah, you just sort but of. But what's going through your head? Shit. What, what's that he done? Yeah. What's going on? What, yeah, like, I don't know, like, yeah, hold back the tears, wait to find out what is actually going on and then go in there and find out. But Has like there the, been techniques that you've over the years that now that you find to sort of manoeuvre through when you're going through moments like this? Uh, it was probably harder the last couple of years, like with Rory, like if Jared's on the field and has gotten hurt, I'm trying to, you know, make sure that Rory's still okay yeah. and then like juggle sort of all of that. But I guess like no techniques as such, but sort of just have the positive mind that he's not going to get hurt. Like when he runs out, I say, have a good game, good luck, have fun. 
just not thinking that he could get hurt, just yep. sort of block that out until it Putting it out to the universe, it like it's going to be okay. Yeah. If, yeah. if it happens, we'll deal with it then. But like the worst injury was the one he did at home yeah. <laughs> with no trainers or any doctors around. So that like that was that was horrible. Yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> the way you were looking at each other. Uh, oh, for the he, viewers that are listening. <laughs> that was, that was when I done the shoulder that we spoke about earlier. So yeah. I'd done, uh, I can't remember what year it was, 20, you were pregnant, weren't you? Mm-hmm. It was about to top it all off. Um, must have been 2022. Two. So early in the year, yeah. You were, oh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, you were pretty pregnant. Um, and yeah, every night we we would get something done to our room. So we had a mattress in the land room and then in front of the TV and we just left it there for ages because we loved it. Like laying there and sleeping every night watching just comfy out. Anyway, got out of the shower. I always shower Rory, get out of the shower, go down, get him sorted, lay down on the mattress and I wanted to watch something. So I went to change the channel and I'd, I'd done this when I dislocated my shoulder at, um, at home that game against the Bulldogs and then I'd been rehabbed and rehabbed for about six or eight weeks. And I remember because it was on the Tuesday and that afternoon they do the team list Tuesday and I got named in the team for the first game back. So I was meant to play this weekend and I reached over to grab the TV remote with the, that one and it just went straight out and I just jumped up. I screamed and jumped up and Rory just didn't know what had happened and she was in the shower and I went in there just hanging it over just going, I can rip it in, rip it in, just trying to get it to pop it back in for me because the first time I'd done it, I remember it was oh, sitting wow. there and then I sat down and it actually just sat back in and then it was instantly better. I felt, you know, I thought oh, I must have been carrying on a little bit and then she... Tried a few things to pull it, and that she did. She was freaking out. He's obviously. like yelling at me, pregnant. like, like <laughs> Rory's crying. Fix it, like push. The doctor did this, and I'm like, oh, it doesn't like it doesn't look good. It doesn't look oh, like yeah, it's just gonna yeah. pop yeah, back yeah. in. Yeah. What am I gonna do? Yeah. So then yeah, yeah. I was just literally <laughs> trying, and then he's yelling at me because I'm trying and I'm doing it wrong. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. I was in pain. It was, and we're why. trying to get onto the doctor. The doctor wasn't answering. The physio wasn't answering. So it was just literally like 20 minutes of him screaming, Rory crying because he's screaming and. Going, what the fuck are we gonna do? Like, go to I can actually picture this in my head. Oh. You with an arm like this, you're the, pregnant. You're like, ground. ah, I, I don't know. Try and find out where it wasn't yeah. agonising, and I was just on my hands and knees in Rory's bedroom, just with the phone like that, just I'm trying to ring people, trying to yeah. ring. And eventually, I got on the, I don't know which one, but they got me onto the dock. The dock eventually answered. Goes, all right, I'm just leaving from Garen. So wait another half an hour away. <laughs> it would have been an hour just on. So it was all boom out. out. Yeah, just out. And <sighs> yeah, so the dock got there and. Yeah, I was just the worst era of my life. And, then, and just worse timing when the, nobody could really help you. Yeah, 6.30 at night, like, yeah. It's, and well, then he got there and gave me the green whistle Yeah, and put me down and just literally laid back, wrapped his arms around me and, like, pretty much got me like an arm Like an arm bar, bar like a, yeah, like like a wrestling expect, move. Yeah, like, and then I'm like, how the fuck did you yeah, think yeah, I was going to well, do that? She couldn't. Like, it was right out. So this time I was, I'd done a job on it. <laughs> So then when I first done it, it must have obviously just subluxed and fallen back in. And mm. I thought, oh, she can do that for me. But she yeah. turns out she could. And the doc took a couple of reefs out of it to get it back in. And, yeah, it was pretty – doc was even crying. We thought there and then that's when we probably thought that that might have been it because that was obviously surgery straight off to get reconstruction from then. And the, and the whistle was obviously given to you before he did the – Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 So that was like the first career was... injury is uh, reaching for a remote, remote, remote control. control. Yeah. And people didn't believe me. I'm like, that's exactly what freaking happened. Trust me. <laughs> um, yeah. I would be, yeah, as but yeah, I'd be laughing, but also like, I don't even know. I'd be like, what is this? Is the, in my career, all of this, I've done all of that and yeah. just a remote control. Yeah. 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 It was pretty much it. Was it was wild. But, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so definitely that one. Um, so that wasn't even on the field. That was literally sitting in my lounge room. Yeah. Um, but you were I, in the shower. Yeah, <laughs> already kind of yes. undergoing pregnant, business. Pregnant. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think cheekbone the, was the worst injury. Yeah, was your cheekbone. His whole left side of his face was just squashed in, so couldn't eat, yeah. couldn't drink. That was that was when we were young. Wasn't it? Yeah, 2012. Not too many other responsibilities, yeah. so it was pretty pretty massive for us. That's yeah. why you were saying you you got the injuries a bit earlier. Uh, the, the earlier one you were able to heal from. Yeah. 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 And that was the back end of the season. We we lost the week after in the finals and that was off season then. So that was yeah. just, it was, I think we got about six plates from my jaw right to my cheekbone, but it was in the off season and we were young and mm-hmm. carefree then as well. So it was pretty. Easier. Yeah, easier. <laughs> yeah, life yeah. is easier. <laughs> no more dislocating. Um... Well, I can't lift it. It's, I've got a big scarf all the way out there. So it's got 
a different surgery where you can't actually get it above your head now. So I can't dislocate that one. Okay. <laughs> you won't even see him trying to do anything too oh, dislocating. I can't even do chin-ups and that. So yeah. Yeah. Like, probably oh, wow. no way of dislocating it. I didn't realise dislocating was what it could be worse than breaking. Well. Because I broke my collarbone and I can still, I'm back to. No. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, that was the second. I'd already had one reconstruction on him as well. So they've. Ooh, yeah, the, okay. all the labrum and that are in the back, it just ripped everything Oh, it was a out. double whammy. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, wow. Locked it right in there now. So I think they take a bit of, take a piece of your collarbone, or, uh, yeah, shoulder blade and yeah. like strap it so it stays down. Mm. Sort of like my kneecap. Yeah. Done that as well. He's just falling apart, <laughs> really. Glue them together. Yeah. But that's the, I, I find it fascinating with like the human body. It's just always wanting to survive, always trying to. And now with technology and medicine, they yeah. can find they've it's developed. Well, yeah, Jared's last couple sort of saved my career um, goals was stem cell surgery. So he yeah. had two lots yeah. of stem cells, which I should have a lot of them. Actually. Yeah, that wouldn't be around in the good old days. No, no. no. Did you have to travel for that? Just yeah, to see me. Oh, yeah, yeah no, it's just, I it's, thought you couldn't do it here. Yeah, no, in there's been, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. there's been a few, um, that's cool. A few other players that have had it done over yeah. the last couple of years as well. But, um, yeah, that was just last resort. I just thought I had to because my knee was just buggered and actually worked really well. Uh, because I would have had to retire in what year was it, the bubble 2021 yeah, 20, or something. 20, yeah, they're using stem for amazing. all sorts so of things. That, that yeah. it would, would have taken me from 50 to 80 percent, I reckon, 85 yeah. percent. Back, back, not 100%, but still way better now than what it was a couple of years ago. So Yeah, now you still got some stored, so you can still use yeah, that. Yeah, can still use them as well. So, um, mm. But it's quite, it's weird. It sounds like a lot. Like you have to put on a lot of weight, which was easy when I was in the bubble. I wasn't playing, so we were just ordering Betty's Burgers and Brownies every night and <laughs> drinking beers every Arvo and the boys were playing footy and we were just cruising out there for a couple of weeks in the bubble. So <laughs> done that, but they literally just take... Um, put two tubes in there. It's like liposuction essentially and get the yep. cells out, mix them up and then just inject them in your knee and you walk in out spots, yeah. in, in there for three or four hours and um, out of there. You can't, it feels like they don't do anything to you, but you're not allowed to go for longer than a 10 minute walk for like a month. Uh, but it doesn't feel like anything's wrong with mm. you either. So it's a bit of a weird one, but I think the cells are sticking to the cartilage and that right. or the bone to make cartilage sort of thing. That's thing. awesome. So, yeah, it's a bit, yeah, fancy, but so that, that might have got you to the three hundred. Just oh, that, definitely. That alone, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think the it stem is actually it's coming in with a storm in the medical field. They've been mm. using it from even anti aging now. They're trying to reverse aging with it and all sorts. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty awesome to see how it actually can help people. Yeah, day to day life massively for you. Yep. I, Was it after that um, <coughs> knee that knee injury where? It was the shoulder, then and then the knee, and then you you had a sit down with your coach Ricky, and he asked you if you wanted to retire. That was then. That was yeah. in the bubble. That, that was, was when in it the was. bubble. Yeah. So how, how was that? Um, oh, it was to, unexpected. Yeah. To, <laughs> to get your coach asking you that, um, and having to come up with an answer. Um, yeah. I, well, I, said, I mean, I didn't really have to come up with an answer because I still had a couple of years on my contract. So um, no, it was just a, sort of his thought and I was pretty much, I was always against it, especially especially up the, well, A, being away from, you know, and stuck in a bubble, I didn't want to finish in a bubble. Um, mm. But B, I hadn't tried the stem cell yet and I'd spoken about it for probably 18 months before it when my knee started. And they started going probably the year after the grand final in 2020 and then we hit COVID and then we were going on road runs and stuff and just, it just, I just all of a sudden I went, oh, fucking knee sore like a lot sore than usual and then it just got worse and worse and then it was yeah 12 months later in the bubble that that probably came around and I had a bad year and the shoulder and coming off the shoulder the knee was still not right and well obviously wasn't getting any better because it was you know bone on bone so it was never going to get better um and I can understand where they came from because it that had been eight, sort of 12 18 months of that really of just getting back from the shoulder knees no good shoulders not great knee and then we sat down like obviously was I was never going to Agree to it. <laughs> yeah, so you yeah. want to do it. Yeah. Um, but then we thought we might as well just try this. Like, what's the, mm. you know, let's try it. And I spoke to a few other players that had had it done and stuff, and they gave me full of confidence. And then I thought, well, I might as well try it. And then, um, yeah, got it done. Done nothing for a long time, and then we come back in. I come back in overweight. All that. I had to do a lot of stuff, a lot of work. And I started the season. It would have been the twenty-two season. Started in reserve grade, but it's the best I've felt in mm. years. Knee, under me, with me legs and knees. Um, and then dummy shoulder, that story we just told. So, <laughs> so that's another reason why I wanted to give 2023 a run, a mm. real good crack to get to 300. But 
the start of the season before, I played 10 games with my legs just feeling unreal, but albeit New South Wales Cup, first game back in the NRL, dumped my shoulder. <laughs> Uh, but I was like, well, it's not my knees that are stop me, mm. stopping me. It's my shoulder, and it, you know, I'll get it right. That doesn't bother yeah. me. That's when they put the bone stuff in. I knew we couldn't go again, so I was like, well, I haven't really given my knee a good crack. So I went in that shoulder period. I got the second injection of the knees as well, so make sure it was ready yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. And then I was ready to go. Come out last year, and I was good to go. <laughs> Twenty one again, and yeah, and really brought us into the uh, the finals because it was kind of a. A little bit of a masterstroke to bring you back into the side, it seemed, uh, and the the uh, it was the players who were asking for it. Yeah, which was um, yeah, it's nice. You always want your players and your mates to to want to play with you and want you in the team, and um, especially the group where we had who we'd had for such a long time, um, the five or six boys that have been playing together for over ten years, um, which is very special for. For one club, mm. um, so that was that was quite special, and um, yeah, it all you know finishing off as it was tough the last couple of games and not finishing off the season playing, but the that roller coaster there of the first couple of weeks of being back in the team and winning and mm. <laughs> winning winning every game apparently, or, or, you know, it, as coming from a losing streak to a winning yeah. streak, we turned it all around pretty quick, and to be in there and be a part of it, and especially the first game against the Broncos up there, they were undefeated. Yeah, we'd lost six in a row. First game back, and we didn't have Jacko or Taps. So we had two best players. Um, yeah, that was that was really special. Um, and then yeah, just the build up of getting back into yeah, in the, we were essentially in the top five or six for the rest of the year, really. Then mm. um, and yeah, just it, it did take its toll on me a little bit by the back end of the year. Just took its toll on the body, um, but it was pretty pretty special to be a part of. Mm. No, it was an awesome time. Every time you touched the ball at home, it was like. In those last few games, the crowd went wild. Yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, that, that was the best part. Them, them home games. Home games are always the best. And um, you know, like I said, there's been a couple of reasons. Obviously, that you know, to get back to get the 300, um, giving the knees a crack, but to play at home again too, um, because it hadn't hadn't played a lot at home over recent years because we had the bubble. So in 20, 2020, we had COVID. Twenty one, we went up to um, so we had no fans in twenty. Went up to Queensland in twenty one, and then played one game in 22 and done my shoulder. So I hadn't played in front of mm, you know, our, our faithfuls either for mm. a while as well. So to get that, um, you know, that all those games in there and obviously the 300th was, you know, it was it was a pretty much a fairy tale. I mean, I could have, you know, you, you can have, could have finished perfectly, but, you know, not many people get to do that. Um, mm. So I was pretty lucky to get, to get that opportunity again. Absolutely. That was awesome. Great time for the Raiders. Mm. And then... Um... What are you thinking you're going to do for the future or together um, after now the NRL is – I mean, you are coaching. Yeah. But um, are you going to be coaching full-time? Yeah, well, it's it's a pretty full-time job, yeah. Oh, okay. Not, so not, it's not – you're not going in to, as casual. Well, I'm not casual, no. no. So I'm, I'm part of the coaching staff. Yeah, okay, you're I'm doing – I'm not um, doing what Sticky does where he's – 24 7 365 days a year because they're, they're, the head coach is just full time I and mean, yeah. you've got to manage 36 kids essentially like yeah. as well as our family at home so uh but yeah i'm doing a fair bit in there and yeah. as the season builds up i'll do more as well i'll yeah. be more involved so it's only i've only been in there the last couple of weeks starting back up um after coming away from holidays so uh, there'll be plenty of that plenty of footy still and um yeah we've got a, yeah lots of stuff to do throughout the year but Brittany even said i said oh, i don't want to be i don't want to have to do it and beat the footy every weekend. She's like, I want you to beat the footy. I want you to be involved in it all still and beat the games and Rory's going to want to do it. And so it was a pretty easy decision to do it together. You want to have some He's... other plans too though. And then for <laughs> you, Britt, you're going back into work and rebrand? Yeah. I'm going to, yeah, sort of start fresh, give myself a bit of a facelift and sort of make it feel nice and new in yep. um, the salon. So get back into that, but then still just that's the best thing about, I guess, being your own boss. You can sort of have that flexibility and yep. make it work for you. So... Still like yeah, if Jared's travelling for footy, like we'll do the odd, you know, travel here and there. And I don't know, we are quite busy and we do always have things on. So it's nice to sort of just be able to control hours and stuff. But yeah, this year I guess is just finding our feet outside yep. of what we've known for the last fifteen years. 15 years yeah. 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 So just it's a big out. milestone. It's a big change in like anyone's life, really, if you think about like yeah. something you're used to for that many years and then yeah. For that change to happen. Yeah. You, you like, guys are doing really well. Like with, you seem very, have a positive outlook on it. And 
Yeah, it's like, yeah, like everything, I guess, changes, you know, like car sponsors, like, you know, yeah. every, like everything, I guess, to to see yeah, figuring out where where we want to be. and Maybe start your own podcast together. We'd probably argue too much. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd talk yeah. the whole time. That's a style, you know, that's like a, there's a whole new style. You never know what people are into these yeah. days, you know, they want the raw authenticity. True. true. Yeah. yeah, you definitely get that. Welcome to Jared and Britt's podcast. Yeah. Just with the kids. Just, with... just, just, just me. <laughs> yeah, with Rory screaming and playing in the background. Um, but yeah. You, you I think the fans say something? Love to see it. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask on the, um, on the coaching job and, you were talking about Ricky, the twenty four seven nature of it. Is um, is head coach something you'd be interested in doing in the future? Uh mate, you're down the track, maybe. It's, <laughs> it's not something I'd, you know. You've got to, you've obviously got to learn a lot and become, you know, do a lot to become that, you know, to become a head coach. It's hard for young blokes just to get thrown straight in that job. Um, there's obviously a lot of steps and hurdles and stuff mm. in between. But I'd, you know, that's a long way away f- for me. Just thinking. I love footy, um, but they've got the head coach has got so much more than footy just to do. They've got thirty six other kids, and they've got to manage every kid. Some people's parents, and then play managers, and um, do a lot of lot of work where um, it sort of becomes less footy. And that's where Stink's really good. He he's got his assistant coaches that he lets them run what they need to run. He doesn't try and take on board everything because you just can't do it. Um, but yeah, maybe one day down the track. But I've sort of you'd be great was, at it. Yeah, I was uh, the technical the. The footy side of it, I would, the, you know, start cutting video and they live on the video, the video, the analysis and all that. And I don't, I've never really done that. Even as a player now, the, the game now is different from when I first started because you've got to cut your own video, do all this. Whereas I've never done that and I never really learned to do it by the back end of my career. Ever. I'd just go up and see if someone had something to show me. Otherwise, <laughs> I'd mm. go out and train. So mm. um, there's a lot more detail around it all now. But um, I think the footy side of it, yeah, I'd, I'd like to. Um, but it's a probably a long way away from yeah. it. That's also you like growing at the moment though. Yeah. Like you yeah, might like you, yeah, yeah. You, you might good, start to get into it. So yeah. just waiting to see. Yeah, good opportunity to work out how much I want to do and especially come the season, work out if you want to keep doing more of it and, and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you handle social media with posting and all that? That means you don't you're not in in, in do you take control of that or do you have someone there doing that for you? The socials? You? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I do it. <laughs> oh, I, I do it. I don't I don't I'm pretty quite and private as well, which is what we spoke about before. She, Brittany wants me to branch out and you know, yeah. use the profile a little bit more, which I do to a degree, but also don't like too many people knowing too much about me as well. Like I'm Fair. pretty chilled out as well. So, yeah, I'll start doing a bit of that sort of stuff. But um, Brittany, so You can sort of curate it in, can, to what you – Yeah. Mm. That's the beauty about it. I mean, you guys are in a good position where not a lot of people are, where you don't have – even though you're such in public art, you don't have – too much about your who you are in your personal life yeah. which in this day and age we don't uh, the digital footprint is heavy mm. so most of us don't get to you know have that uh privilege anymore so it's good that now you kind of have that control of how much you want to show yeah especially that you're already out in the public eye and doing all that on top so yeah it's pretty and full on it's all fun and i guess it's the way of the world these days you know yeah. if you're moving forward there's so much opportunity that social media brings yeah um so yeah we want i to, vouch for that yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oath, like, yeah we want to jump on board and i guess expand but yeah still definitely keep that private you know the things the, that we don't the want private to, essence yeah, about it yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's just like yeah you can do like with like content creating sharing i mean doing things like this with even yeah sharing bits and bobs and I, uh, you seem like you've got a lot of, I can see your, you've got a lot of ideas that you're, you've been ticking that you're like, I've got this and this and that. Yeah. Uh, I, oh yeah. I'm always thinking of what's next and what else we can do and yeah. how much we can fit into our day. <laughs> no, you, get, like, you get up at when? Yeah. Six? Five? Four thirty. Four four thirty. Four thirty, quarter to five, yeah. Wow. Um, I'm extremely OCD, like neck level OCD. So... I spend so much time doing unnecessary things, which I know is unnecessary, but I can't stop doing it. But then does it help you? At the oh, end? like it makes me function. Yes. I can't do my day without doing those things. Right. So then therefore they they are helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like I'm. I grew up with an OCD mum. Yeah. So, you, so yeah. she's you, yeah. shoes for the bathroom, shoes for the toilet, shoes for the <laughs> room, shoes for the. Everything is organised. It made my life easier. Yeah. I am not. 
and as organized and as ever to that level no way yeah so I it made my life easier so you can sit back and yeah, you know, everyone appreciates your work. Yes. And then you're well, like sometimes <laughs> sometimes you'd be like, What are you doing? I'm like, Leave me alone, I'm fine. I got one more we'll let you guys go. Um, yeah. but I got one more question. We've had um Grace Kemp on the plot on the pod first step. I wanna ask about how it's been having the women's side at the club and how that's changed. Um uh Grace mentioned it was very welcoming. But I imagine now it's almost the women's are also an asset to the men's team. And are you going to involve that in your coaching sort of stuff? Yeah, well, I, I will. I sort of haven't got all the fine details of what I'm actually, you know, what my role will be. But it's, yeah, I want to do everything for under 16s, 17s, 19s, 20s, women's helping out, especially with the gulking side of things. They're just things I know like the back of my mm -hmm. hand. So to help in that. But the girl, the way the girls came in last year, the women came in last year, and I think no one expected them to do anything. In those first couple of games, they just were unbelievable. Like I found myself watching when I didn't think I would, to be honest. Like mm. I didn't, didn't, I never watched NRL, let alone, um, let alone like watching the, watching the women's either. So I never thought anything of it. And then I remember the first couple of times they played, they just they just had that Raiders Raider about it, didn't they? Mm. Where no one expects mm. them to do anything. It's probably everyone's second team. No one expects them to go any good, and they come out and put so much pride in the jersey and they spoke about that and they they lived it as well which was the best part um and they had such a good year and yeah, i'm looking forward to seeing how they go again as well absolutely see i'm more i got more interested because the females started playing and then i was like oh yeah <laughs> they've done so well they've come yeah on, and i get and they've done so well yeah. i've i've yeah i just still talk to grace and you know catch up and yeah. i'm like you're yeah. well I, done one of my best friends yasmin um Clydesdale, she plays oh, for yeah. the Newcastle Knights and yeah, killing it. She went from touch to rugby sevens to now the NRLW and smashing it, like absolutely killing yeah. it. Like she's just come under the radar. And I've like, got a friend of Mahalia as well. Yeah, yeah. Mahalia's killing it. Yeah. Yeah, she's awesome, like so yeah, nice. They've, it's really good to see that the um, – I think it's also needed. It's the fresh faces, fresh bazaars, fresh energy yeah. and more work for everyone. Sports for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Inclusivity. Right. Yeah. 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 Get more people involved. Good for the mental health. Yeah. yeah. More movement. Less depression. Yeah. That's good. Great. Yeah. Good for the brain. So, yeah, I'm really happy to see that. We can't um, wait. We won't leave you for too long. Thank you so much. I'm getting really hot. Hot. The warm, the lights in my face are getting oh. really warm. So, if you cool. see me a bit. <laughs> so, I started overheating. Um, totally fine. Thank you for coming. Thank you Thanks for having, having us. It, you, and uh, my pleasure. Good chats. It was, and uh, Nick, Good would you like to say the, anything? Uh, for the, uh, in a month's time, kick off the new season and Good luck as a coach. Thanks, mate. Yeah, it comes around a lot quicker when you're not getting flogged all pre-season. It's coming around pretty quickly now. Hopefully we can get a few kickers like your record in the future. See so how we go, mate. We don't, yeah. want, don't want them too good, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> Third top highest in ever. And thank you for the viewers. Thank you for everyone who's been watching. I see all your messages, all your comments. I appreciate it. There's more coming. And yeah, au revoir. See you later. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.